Hmm. Hmm. Now, I'm in the piano and organ business. I said, how many mosques are there in the world? He said, millions and millions and millions of them. And I said, none of them have a piano. He said, no. Any of them have an organ? He said, no. Oh, man, I can get rich. Just introduce some music to these guys, put it in there, you know, bound to be. I said, do the Arabs have any music? He said, oh, Arabs have music. I said, hmm, boy, I got it figured out, boy. <laughs> I can see my next million dollars coming right straight up to at me, you know. So then the priest asked again another time, he want to go back to the masjid again. He went, this is middle of July, 1991. He went to the masjid with him again. And by the way, this masjid, Sheikh Mama Jabali knows it very well, is on Medina Drive in Arlington, Texas. And that's where they were going to, because we were living in Midlothian, just south of Oak Cliff, and south of Dallas. So they didn't come back. All night we're waiting. What happened? Very late they came back. And when he came in, I looked. There's Muhammad. I recognize him. Who's the guy with him, though? He's wearing a white jalabiyah, white dress like this. He has a white pillbox cap on his head. And I looked at him and I said, Pete, his name was Father Peter Jacobs, but we're not, you know, Catholic, so I don't have to call him Father. I said, Pete, did you become a Muslim? He said, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. I said, Oh my God! Now I used to have cameras like these cameras right here because we had a television show called Estes Music Jamboree. So I got one of our cameras out, opened it up, set it all up on the tripod, and I was going to interview him. And ask him, well, you know, well, you went to Islam, what happened? While I was talking to him, though, he fell asleep. So it was still in my mind, and I was thinking, what am I going to do? This is too amazing. Now, here I'm preaching to the people, and I'm trying to change what I'm saying. And here is a priest, just became a Muslim. My father's saying it's a good deal, it sounds all right to him. Now, I don't know what to do. So I decided, I'll talk, make mashura. Huh? I talked to my wife. We have an apartment upstairs. We were in our apartment up there, and I'm telling her, oh, you know, a priest became a Muslim today. What is that? And can you imagine what they were saying about the Quran and saying about this and so and so? All of a sudden, she said, I want to get a divorce. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not the subject, but uh, what happened? She said, no, all this talking about religion and talking about Islam and so I can see it. I said, oh, no, 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 no. No problem here. No, no problem. I said, you thought I, no, no, I was just observing somebody else. No, I'm not interested. Trust me. I don't want to be with those Muslims. Last thing I want to do is be with a Muslim. Ugh. No way. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Just put your mind at ease. She said, I need a divorce. I said, what are we going with this again? What's the problem with that? What happened? She said, a Muslim can't be married to a Christian. I said, what? No, wait a minute. Hold on. I don't look. Look at me. I'm telling you. I swear I don't want to be a Muslim. Okay? Okay? And even if I did, don't you remember what he said? A Muslim man could be married to a Christian woman. It's not a problem. But I'm not saying I want to. I'm just saying it's not a problem. She said, that is the problem. A Muslim woman can't be married to a Christian man. I want to be a Muslim, so I need a divorce. I'll never forget, I was sitting right on the edge of the bed, just sitting there, you know, and I almost fell over. I said, at last, I can tell the truth. I can say it. I didn't realize that she liked the idea. I was afraid. I said, okay, the good news is... I, too, want to be a Muslim. You know what she said? I don't believe you. I said, no, no, really. I was just saying that because, you know, but for sure, just so you know, I want to be a Muslim. I've been thinking about it. I want to be a Muslim. We're both going to be a Muslim. Alhamdulillah, it's going to be great. Right? You know what she said? I don't believe you because you're either lying right now or you were lying five minutes ago when you said you didn't want to be a Muslim. And either way... I don't want to be married to a liar. So get out. So I started leaving. I'm walking down the stairs of the apartment. I'm down to my father's part. I said, wait a minute. Where am I going to go? This is 
in my father's house. I just got thrown off of my own property. <laughs> what happened here? So I went to get to Mohammed and I woke him up. I said, come, you and me, we got to talk. Come with me. And we went outside the house and we walked those country roads in Middle Othian, Texas until the time for the, dawn, uh, the sun to come up at dawn. And all that time I talked to him about what's it like to be a Muslim? How do you have to believe? What do you have to do? Let me hear all of it now. And no more playing a game. I'm not debating. I just want to know. Just tell me. Just tell me what's Islam. I need to know what I need to do. And he told me everything and I realized this is it. I got to make a decision. This is a big deal though. And he told me, okay, this is up to you. You have to go make a choice for yourself. I can't help you. I said, oh my God. So when he was praying Fajr, I decided, I've been watching this man praying this direction with his head on the ground. It's so beautiful to see a man humble himself, put his head on the ground to the Rabbil Alameen. I said, oh my God, let me try that. So I sneaked off somewhere where nobody could see me. Illallah. And then I found a place, a board there, you know, and I bowed down on the ground and I put my head down on the ground on that board there. And I was, and by the way, I'm pretty good at speaking, especially in prayers. I used to make so long a prayer, they wouldn't let me say the prayer at Thanksgiving because the food would be cold. Okay? So, but I put my head on the ground and only these words came. No more words, just this. Oh God, guide me. That's it. And I was thinking, well, I've got to say more than that. Nothing. Oh God, if you're there, guide me. That's it. After a while, I sat up and I looked around. There wasn't any fancy rainbow. It wasn't birds flying around. There was no big signs from above. There was no music, angels, harps, nothing like this. It was just a cloudy day in Texas. But inside, I could realize I had to make some changes. To me, that's what I need to do. There's the problem, it's inside of me. Within a few minutes, it became clear what I needed to do. And I had to develop an idea of how to pull this off. I talked to my wife, I talked to my father, I made a bath, and at 10 o'clock that morning, in Middle Othian, Texas, I went in front of this man named Muhammad, and this new man named Yahya, who used to be the priest, and I said, Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. Immediately after that, my wife did her shahada. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. A few months later, my father did his shahada. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. Step by step by step, we saw so many people enter into Islam. We wanted to tell the whole world what is Islam. We wanted everybody to know the real Islam. I said, how could this escape our knowledge? How could we not know about this great and wonderful thing called Islam? And it looks like all we got to do is just tell the people. I went to the imam of the masjid there and I told him, let's, let's tell the people. Then I found out something else about us as Muslims. And that's why we've got this convention here right now. This is why we have the exhibition. So you're going to use this week to learn how you can become, inshallah, the best Muslim you can be and how you can show the real Islam to the people that are not Muslim. This is your duty. This is your duty. This is your language. This is your people. Just as it's my duty to give the message to my people and my language. And so uh, the same way, it's your duty to give the message to your people. Allah will not ask you if they made shahada, but he will ask you if you delivered the message. Alhamdulillah today, I can tell you with no doubt in my mind, we have seen thousands of people give shahada, several hundred at a time. And I don't do it through debates. But I don't need to debate any Christian. I was a Christian. I am a Muslim. If you want, I can give you both sides. Easy. Okay? I'll play both parts. I'll be the Christian and tell you this, and then I'll be the Muslim and give the answer. And there won't be any argument. And I've done that so many times. And let me share one story with you before I end. I'm going to leave now. Inshallah. 
I was telling the brothers today that I was asked to give a talk in a church in Hagerstown, Virginia, uh, Hagerstown, Maryland, just outside of Virginia. This was in 1999, and I went there and I gave a talk in the church on Sunday. Because I know how to address the people. How many years was I a Christian? Fifty years? I know what they want to hear. You get them ready, and they said, oh, wow, this is normal preaching. But then when I came to the part, la ilaha illallah, I stayed on la ilaha illallah until they said, yes, that makes sense, it makes sense. There was one old lady that she was saying yes. Afterwards, she said, yes, but I just don't want to do it the way you telling me. Okay? But guess what else happened? Two people did shahada right there. Hello? In the church. In front of their preacher. They said, yes, we agree. We like this. We want to know more. And we say there's only one God to worship. Shadrach, la ilaha illallah. In front of the preacher. And one of them was his daughter. I took them to the masjid and they did shahada in the masjid that afternoon, a Sunday afternoon. And later the boy, he married the girl. There are Muslims living there now. Now, let me ask you a question. If I would debate and argue with this preacher and made him look stupid, would he ever bring me back again? No. I'm going to ask you a question. If you were at a place and you saw somebody change their religion to another religion in the temple of that religion and the father was the priest there, what would you think? Is that man ever going to call me again? Do you think he'd call me again? Three months later, he called me again. Come back again. We really enjoyed it so much. I said, how's your daughter doing? I want to remind him, see what he's going to say. So well, she's doing fine. She likes Islam. It's very nice and lovely. She treats us so good. You know, we're amazed at her personality. We love you guys. Could you please come back again? And I did, alhamdulillah. So I'm just showing you that it's not guidance from me, not guidance from you. It's guidance from Allah. Allah guides whom He wills, whom He wills. So we ask Allah to guide me, all of us, and all the people. And whoever He guides, they'll be fine. But whoever Allah doesn't guide, <laughs> they got a problem, serious problem. Our job here with this exhibition of peace, the vision of Islam, is to do one thing, communicate the true message. If the people don't want it, that's your choice. That's their choice. We don't have to take it. But it's our responsibility in putting this on, all the scholars that are here, it's their responsibility to tell us what's the truth in Islam and let us see for ourselves. And that's what we're going to try to do through this week. So I need you guys to listen to me. You have to participate. Your side of it. Your side of it is to show up every day. And your side of it is to bring other people. I want you to look at all that blue plastic. Look at the blue plastic back there. You see that blue plastic? The next time we come up here, I don't want to see blue plastic. And that means I don't want you to steal the chairs tonight, okay? I want you to go get some people and fill up those chairs so they can hear this message before it's too late. Because if that man from Cairo, Egypt, had not taken the time to spend three months of working slowly, carefully, nurturing myself, my wife, my father, my daughters, they also became Muslim, by the way, I forgot to mention that part, and a priest, look at what Allah gave him. And from all the people that we gave shahada, this man in Egypt is taking the reward for that, even now. Even now. I'm not saying you'll give a Yusuf Estes the shahada, but I'm saying Allah will give you the reward according to what you're trying to do. Please don't leave this place tonight and forget what you heard here. Please carry this with you.